Hello, this is Sausage Fingers and welcome to a reasonably quick tutorial on how to make great thumbnails with 100% free, safe and legal software. You've pretty much got what you need on your computer right now. There is a couple of things we need to install. What we are going to end up with is this. Okay, now, first of all, if you're playing a game or if you've got something on your screen, you want to screen grab it. What we are going to do, and I'm going to open the path file here, is we're going to press Windows and print screen. You can do that whether you are in game, out of game, doesn't matter. Everyone's got that on the computer, that's the file path there. That is how you save your screenshot initially. Now, as you can see, I've got three monitors. I only want that middle one. So first of all, we are going to install GIMP if you haven't got it already. Go to your internet. There, there is the internet. Type in GIMP. Do this one. There are other dodgy ones about. This is completely legal, free and open source software. Google the hell out of it. It is great. It does everything that Photoshop does, but it does it for free. Hmm. Once you have installed the GIMP, then what you will end up with when you open it is this. You might have a newer version by the time you watch this, but it's been the same for years. It's all good. Now I can close this because what I'm going to do now is I am going to right click on my screenshot and I am going to go open with GIMP. GNU manipulation e program thing. Now that's opened that up. All of my clicks are left clicks. I'm going to use no shortcuts at all during this video unless I stay otherwise. Now, hovering down here, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. As you can see, it has saved all three screens. We only want that one. First stage is cut that out. And this don't have to be pretty. In fact, we will pretty it up. I'm going to get rid of my recycle bin and I'm going to get rid of my taskbar. I'm going to highlight that by holding the left mouse button and drag into the area I want. Now I'm gonna right click on that and I am gonna cut. I'm going to open a new one with file, new, and mine is 1920 by 1080. I don't know what yours is. Then we've got a new one. I can get rid of this now, it is dead. Yes, dead. I'm going to zoom out a little bit to give myself some visibility and I'm going to right click on here and I am going to paste. There, it's the wrong size, it doesn't fit in there. Not a problem. Go over here, scale tool, left click on it once and double click on there, 1920 by 1080. Now, you have to actually manipulate these. If I just press scale, it wouldn't scale. So you have to kind of give it a little knock like that and then it will scale. Once that is done, I can drag this into position, like so. Now, as you can see up here, this is a pasted layer. This took me ages to work this out. You cannot do anything with this layer yet. So we're gonna to go to layer and we're going to go and anchor that layer. That is now attached to the background. Doesn't matter if it's the background or not. Yes, that is how we get our first screen grab. So I am going to close this and open a prettier screen grab, i.e. the one you saw at the beginning. I'm just going to double click on a screen. In fact, I'll put it over here. There we go. I'm going to double click on this. It's opened it with this. I can right click. I can open with and it should pop up. Don't press always use this to open files. It's a pain in the neck and you have to reset it. Press on that and go like that. I can close that now. Now that's opened. Beautiful, you say. Beautiful. Right, now we need some writing and stuff, i.e. fonts, if you like. Now there are loads and loads, and these are 110% publicity free. You don't have to put attribution or anything like that if you use any of the fonts inside of GIMP. They're all open source and free. But if you want a million more fonts, go back to your internet I can close GIMP now, we've got that. Type in the font, go to the font. Now, if you click on one of the fonts, there is some things you have to be aware of as a YouTuber, i.e. Copy, copyright, attribution, all that malarkey. So we're gonna to go to more options, we're gonna go 100% free and submit. 
There are literally thousands upon thousands, and you'll know if it's 100% free because it says 100% free. If you left click on it, blah, 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 blah. You might have to go to the author's license and you may have to give him an attribution. You will not have to pay. Yes. Now you could download them. Once you've downloaded them, you close GIMP, reopen it, and it will find your fonts for you. Yes, they're very, very easy to install. One such font that I have used that I like particularly, I'm going to use this. I'm going to go size 150 because I know that works. And why am I writing in black, you may say? Well, there is a reason. What I'm going to do, we're going to call this epic thumbnail. Yeah, right. That ain't where I want it to be. So I'm going to le left click on the move tool. And if you notice, there's a little hand every now and again. If I was to move that now, it would move the background. So I'm going to undo that move layer. Now to move that, you need to get it where it is just the move cross. And then you can manipulate that layer. If you cannot move that layer, you might have inadvertently clicked on there and you will be moving this one instead. So make sure you are on your top layer, your writing layer, your epic thumbnail la layer. Now I want that probably about there and I am going to turn it round a bit like this because I kind of want it matching the grass. Yeah, a little bit more. That'll do, that'll do for now, that'll do for now. Now, the reason it's black is because I want to outline my writing. So I'm gonna go across to Epic Thumbnail and I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna Alpha Selection and that highlights it like so. Go up to Select and go Shrink. Go about three if you're using 150 font like I am. Mm. And that will shrink it a little bit. However, it will keep your black border. Now what I want to do is go to my bucket fill tool and change to white or whatever your opposing colours you're using. Now I can go over here and bucket fill this and you can't see it till you're finished but it will look quite cool. There. Now select none. As you can see it's got a nice little black outline. However, however much you shrink or I will do grow next. However much you shrink it will be however big your black border is. Now I want one more piece of writing and I'm going to do it on a different layer. I do every single thing on an individual layer because then if I cock up one layer, I can just delete it and start again without wrecking the rest of my picture. So I'm going to do a new layer, a transparent one, and I'm going to put it over the top. So now I'm working on that layer. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to write in white this time and it's going to be for instance, Episode number one. Hmm. I'm going to put that where I want it. No, nearly done, nearly did the schoolboy error. There. And I'm going to turn it so it looks comical and jovial, like so. Yes, comically jovial. Right click on my number one, alpha to selection, and this time, select. I'm going to go grow. We shrunk it last time. I'm going to go four this time just to see what it looks like. There. It has grown. With my bucket fill, I'm going to go to black. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Now, if I click there, it will just paint the whole thing black. You got to get around the edges and do it like that. Select none. There. My writing is not standing out enough for my liking. So, making sure I'm on number one still, I'm going to go filters, light and shadow, drop shadow, and these are the settings I like because they're quite mild, however you can do your own. If there was light coming from there, you could change your offset so that you get the shadow in the right direction if you like the physics and things. As you can see, I've got a little bit of drop shadow. I want a little bit more so I can just repeat that like so. Looks alright that, that looks alright. Now. I am going to do more tutorials, i.e. cutting out overlays and things like that. This, I think, is enough to make you a basic thumbnail as you start YouTube. You will get those free defined options and they're usually a load of rubbish. 
So this is enough to get you going. Okay, so now that we've finished, there is one thing left to do, and that is to save our epic thumbnail. So we're gonna to go to File and Save As. It will come up with a load of rubbish up here, and it is an XCF file because it is saved in GIMP's format. So I am gonna call it Epic Thumbnail. That is why I'm called Sausage Fingers, and I am gonna save it as a JPEG or a JPG if you like. You can also save it in PNG format. PNG are like see-through pictures. If you save it in a PMG and try and use it, a PNG and try and use it as a um, thumbnail, it might be too large. It's much, much higher quality. JPG is good enough quality for your thumbnails, more than good enough quality. If you're using photos and stuff, you definitely will go over size. Now, I personally am gonna save it on my desktop. So I'm gonna left click on that. I'm going to save, you'll get this box. You don't click OK, you take me to the export dialog. And on my other screen, I'll drag it over, it comes up with this. Now I'm gonna save it to there, export, and export again. Bosh, you are saved. Now, if I want to save this for later use, I can also save it as epicthumbnail.xcf, and that won't ask me for any of that rubbish, it will just save it. Now, if we close, that's going to be on my desktop. There's the, SX, the, the SXFX. There's the XCF file, and there is your epic thumbnail. I'm going to open it with photos to have a look. Hmm, epic, you say. It is not an amazing thumbnail, but it is enough to get you started. It's enough to get your font, to get your outline, to get you highlighted, to make you look more professional. Yes, if it did help, give me a like and a subscribe. A massive thank you to all my patrons who enable me to carry on doing this. I will see you soon. Laters. <laughs>